Justice Richard Osuche, and I'm presenting together with um, Dr. Mary Setrana. Now, we move into the introduction. How, what, why, why this topic, and why, what, what we are we are expecting within this regime. The first part is purpose of presentation. So we are going to examine the, how how internal displacement and the subsequent cross-border movement of Nigerian nationals across um, within the sub ECOWAS sub region, and also trying to examine how gendered. Um, so the gendered nature of um, internal displacement because of how the data, data are presented within. Um, first is the purpose of presentation, data and methods, and then outline of presentation. And the data met mainly the data from the, um, secondary and primary data sources, and also for government and non-governmental reports and uh, newspapers. And then about the analysis methods, we are using content analysis and uh, document analysis. And this is how the outline is forced migration, we also establishing the different typologies of internal displacement and cross-border movement vis-a-vis -vis the uh, ECOWAS Street in 1979, ECOWAS Street, how it's related to the internal displacement when it comes to the cross-border movement of um, internally displaced persons. So for this, during the discussion, IDP, I'll be, um, will be the acronym for internally displaced persons. Now, to be able to follow the discussion, I would like to come up with some definitions which are very uh, important to understand the discussions. So forced mobility, something I'll be using, be using very often in this discussion, forced mobility and um, IDP, internally displaced persons. Forced mobility, taken from the IOM definitions, uh, for, um, is defined here as a migratory movement in which an element of cohesion exists, including threats to life and livelihood, whether arising from natural man-made causes. Example of from movement of refugees and internally displaced persons, as well as people displaced by natural or environmental disasters, chemical or nuclear disasters, or farming or development projects. So, and about the internally displaced persons, we are taking the definition from the United Nations Guiding Principles in 1998. So it defines a persons or group of persons who have been forced or obliged to flee or to leave their homes or places of habitual residence, in particular as a result of or in order to avoid the effects of armed conflict, situations of generalized violence, violations of human rights or natural or human-made disasters, and who have not crossed an inter internationally recognized state border. Now, the question is, this, this is how we are going to present uh, what we, when we talk about forced, my, forced mobility, there are different, three main, in the literature, there are three main types of forced mobility. We have the refugees, asylum seekers, and the, the internally displaced, per, internal displacement. But here we are focusing on internal displacement because the two, which, which are the um, refugees and then the asylum seekers, they are well defined by law and also according to international from the um, Geneva Convention in 1951-1954. So they have some legal, legal backing, whereas internal displacement, the third part of um, forced, mig forced mobility, they lack, um, the definition lacks legal, legal backing, and so they have to rely on inst institutional uh, favors and also the, the will of the, uh, government and non-governmental institutions to be able to help or assist internally displaced persons. That's why, when it comes to the so hot of this uh, uh, paper, why why forced mobility that three times why internal displacement? The so the so hot of our discussion is that internal displacement still lacks um, legal backing. So legal legal backing. So there is a need to keep the discussion going. And also, why Nigeria? Because in 2015. According to the uh, Norwegian Refugee Council and the IDMC, they said that Nigeria is uh, uh, um, from, they were the third, they had the third largest internally displaced persons in the world. The first were Lib uh, Syria and also Colombia. They were the first two and then followed by Nigeria. So, that's, so that there's a need for us to have some discussions on 
the internal displacement, choosing Nigeria also as a case study. And how can internals within internal displacement then bring in cross-border movement? Actually, we are not, this concept is somehow um, still under construction, but we are not focusing the cross-border movement outside, we are talking about cross-border movement within this uh, ECOWAS Eco sub-region. I know maybe the question, how, internal displacement, once they move out, outside the, um, the nation state, then they cease to be internally displaced persons. But the definition that which qualifies them as internally displaced persons, mostly, which we will be seeing very soon, I think, it, um, are mostly flooding or climate change, also religious and um, religious and eth ethno-religious threats. And the last one is about co coerced ev eviction. So these these three. Um, um, uh, these three multi motivations for for the categorization of internally displaced per or internal displacement normally do not fit into the refugee status or the asylum seeker st status. As a result, when they move outside their country, they still do not qualify for the status as refugees. That's why we try to keep this cross-border movement not taking into account movement outside, uh, outside the uh, ECOWA sub-region. So we are using it in this case mainly for movement of in, internal displaced persons out, outside their nation states, but within the ECOWA sub-region, because that is, why, that is how we'll be able to bring in the 1979 ECOWAS um, protocol on free movement. And so these are the typologies of internal, uh, inter, um, I think there's something missing, internal displacement in Nigeria. There are three main, one is the climate change, and for the climate change we take a flooding and the, the desertification. So in 2012, Nigeria had about, I think the, the second in the world when it come um, um, in terms of flooding, Flooding, displacing persons, there were over 6.1 million people were displaced due to flooding. So wh when, the, um, when these people were displaced, the question of how, how, how what, what the government intervention or how were they placed or put into different, different places. And they were, some of them were hospitalized by families and some of them were, um, were taken into different uh, uh, displacement camps. And some others who also had to find their own means of survival, whereas they couldn't make any legal claim as to what they wanted compared to maybe a refugee or asylum seeker who has the right to seek for something which is his or her own because the law says so. And also in Nigeria, there's issue of desert desertification, especially in the northeastern part of Nigeria, the Sokoto and the Gombe area, where it said in in 2012, there were about within six, according to the according to the displacement tracking matrix of uh, which was instituted by the by IOM, about within only six um, states in Nigeria, about 600,000 people were displaced due to desertification. So the next one is also on terrorist attacks. So I think I have to go a bit forward when it comes to the flooding. So this, the, the, fig, um, the statistics for the flooding and this, uh, so, yeah. so about the terrorist attacks and also an ethno-religious conflicts. And this one here, we fo we're focusing on the Boko Haram issue where for some time it has been harassing, especially those still in the northern part of um, Nigeria. And most of them, they move some, most of them stay in Nigeria, but some also cross border to Cameroon and to the neighboring Benin, mostly Cameroon and Benin. But because they fail this, um, to qualify for, um, as refugees, they are forced to return to Nigeria, which so is, is not supposed to be the case. But when it comes to internal displacement, there is this problem of legality. And the last one is about forced eviction, which I will not move on a bit. So now about the impact of, um, of internal displacement, most of the data shown, uh, I may give the total figures, like in the case of the flooding, the total figure was given without any categorization as to children, female, males, and others. 
which um, we argue that internal displacement, like most social issues, are gendered because the relation between females and males has to, they have to be taken into consideration because females do suffer more when it comes to internal displacement. And there was a work which was done um, in 2016 in which um, some, some females were interviewed and also some males were interviewed. And within this, um, from the interviews, some of, of the fem most of the females were enticed with, um, with ways of support, of with support from people, from government officials or from very, very important personalities. But at the end of the day, some of them ended up being raped or ended up being, um, being exploited. So the argument is that internal displacement cannot, it's not free of gender bias. And so it has to be, the issue of gender has to be taken into consideration when it comes to internal displacement. And now we come to the, the other point of the linkage and assessment of cross-border movement of, movement of IDPs and the 1979 ECOWAS protocol. So the ECOWAS protocol established three main things, the free, freedom of movement of persons and also um, the right the right of settlement and also the right to work. But I think the three phases, out of the three phases, only one has been fully achieved. That is the freedom of movement, so which is a temporary stay within the ECOWAS sub-region. Whereas the other two are still not, have, have not been um, implemented. And so the argument is that if internally displaced persons, when they, in case they cross the border, they are not able to show, have, they are not able to show anything as um, West African citizens. And according to the law, uh, the protocol, you have to show something that you are a West African to be able to benefit from um, any of the uh, um, from the, any of the legal legal issues. But because they are not able to show anything, they end up in the in the in form of illegality, and therefore they are subject to um, to things or to way of life which are not right, um, which are not really good and also which they are not they were not supposed to be in as persons who are disadvantaged and so if this the face the, the right to uh, the right to entry and the abolition of business if they are able to extend it if it is extended to the free freedom of residence and right to establishment i think these these two are very critical for they, um, for internally displaced persons when they cross the border to be able to be well established and also to be able to move and then live a life which is um, worth, worth and also benefit from all the, uh, the welfare activity even though it's not so much developed within the sub-region. Now the, the conclusions and the key research gaps, so the we, from the argument which I began making is that Internal display, there are some people who move voluntarily to their home um, out from their home countries outside to travel or to migrate, but there are others who are also forced to move. And those who are forced to move, they ha some do benefit from being refugees of being asylum seekers. That's a forced mobility, but there are others who are also, who move not because, um, they become internally displaced, or they move within within the within the nations within the boundaries of the nation state. And the, those who move within the boundaries of the nation state because of forced mobility do not benefit from any legal um, legal settings or le le from um, legal declarations. And so, because of that, they suffer. They they they, they suffer from. A lot of they suffer a lot of go through a lot of hardships, and with these hardships, they are not able to come out. Most of them are violated; their human rights are violated, and so they are not able to get established. And the other argument is also that internal displacement is is normally considered as transient, transient, and so I, only temporary um, programs are prepared or are made available for. Um, the IDPs, and because of that, after a few a few period of uh, a period of time, they they fall into 
into the trap of um, people who, are, who persecute them or people who, who, who take advantage of them. So we argue that if there is the need, there is a need for government and non-governmental organizations to provide established and also well-planned economic um, programs so that they can follow and have their kind of, they regain their independence. And the other argument is also that gender continues to be important when it comes to internal displacement because the relation between females and males in internal displacement is not the same. Thank you.